Hello, and welcome to the Canon Training Academy. You're about to begin a journey, a journey through one of Canon's newest products. Welcome to Canon's technical training video on the BJC 600 series bubble jet color printers. Before you begin, there are a few things you'll need to complete this training. You'll need a BJC 600 bubble jet printer, its service manual, parts catalog, tools, a PC and printer cable, a BJC 600 utility diskette, and the accompanying workbook. We suggest you place yourself in a proper training environment. Choose a space where you can concentrate on the material and will not be disturbed by telephone calls or other distractions. This video will move at a rapid pace, so please use the rewind function of your VCR whenever you need to see a section again. At certain points during this video training, you will be instructed to stop the tape and read a chapter of the service manual or to proceed with a hands-on exercise or answer the quiz questions found in the workbook. This tape has been provided so you can learn how to troubleshoot and repair the BJC 600 series printers, so do not skip over any section of this video training. Please write your answers on a photocopy of the provided answer sheet and do not write in the workbook. This video will refer primarily to the BJC 600 printer. However, at the end of this video, you'll be able to troubleshoot and repair the BJC 600, the BJC 600E, and the BJC 610 printers. Now, read the workbook's introduction section and answer the quiz questions located in the workbook. Then, collect the necessary items to begin the training and continue with the tape. Now, stop the tape. Let's begin with the user external parts of the BJC 600 series printers. In the front of the printer, you will find the control panel and the paper exit tray. Underneath the top cover are the printing and purging mechanisms, the user print head gap adjustment lever, and the user definable dip switches. In the rear of the printer are the sheet feeder and paper selector, the AC power receptacle, and the parallel interface. There are four main internal components of the BJC 600 series printers. The printing mechanisms, the paper feeding mechanisms, the control board, and the power supply. This is the print head and ink cartridge system. This integrated print head contains your individual print heads one for each of the color cartridges. Each print head has 64 vertically aligned nozzles. On the BJC 610, the print head nozzles are configured to print at 720 by 720 DPI. On the BJC 600E, 720 by 360 DPI with smoothing, and on the BJC 600, 360 by 360 DPI. Never touch, clean, or wipe the print head nozzles, silver ink filters, or circuitry. Remove the protective packaging. Insert the print head into the carriage base and close the cover until it locks into place. There are four individual ink cartridges that are installed into the carriage base unit. Black, cyan, magenta, and yellow. This four cartridge color combination can produce 16.7 million different colors. Each ink cartridge contains nine milliliters of ink and is rated to print approximately 300,000 high quality characters. The ink is water-based and contains isopropyl alcohol, so be careful not to ingest it. Handle the ink carefully. It will permanently stain your clothes. The ink is also conductive, so be sure to clean up any spills if they occur. Insert the color ink cartridges into their respective slots. Plug in the printer and switch it on. When installing new ink cartridges, you will need to perform a print head cleaning. There are six different cleanings on the printer. A long and short cleaning that cleans and primes all four print head nozzles, or a separate cleaning for each of the individual color print heads. To perform a short cleaning, hold the paper select and the print mode buttons down simultaneously until the printer beeps. The envelope and thick indicators will begin to blink and all four print mode indicators will be on. To toggle between the different cleaning functions, press the print mode button. 
After selecting the desired cleaning function, hold down the paper select button until the printer beeps. This will begin the cleaning cycle. The BJC 600 series printers perform maintenance jet functions while it prints. The printer automatically wipes and caps the individual print heads when it's powered on or off. This prevents the ink from drying out and clogging the nozzles. Never turn the printer off by unplugging it. Doing so will not cap the print heads. Turn off the printer by using the power button on the control panel. If you must ship a BJC 600 series printer, it's important that you follow the proper transportation procedure. Always remove the ink cartridges from the printer and perform a transportation head cleaning before shipping the printer. Refer to page 2-9 and 2-12 in the BJC 610 service manual for the transportation and head cleaning procedure. Refer to service information notice QH 12E 64096 for the transportation and head cleaning procedure for the BJC 600 and BJC 600E printers. Make sure the carriage unit is in the home position and the print heads are capped. Use a piece of tape to secure the carriage unit to the body of the printer. This will stabilize the print head and carriage unit from moving during shipping. At this time, prepare to stop the tape. Read part one in the service manual. Then, install the print head and ink cartridges into the printer. Switch the printer on and perform a forehead cleaning cycle with the top cover open. When you're finished, return to the videotape. Now stop the tape. To print on cut sheet paper, raise the paper support. Make sure the paper selection lever is set to the back of the printer so it's in normal thickness mode. Place up to 100 sheets of paper into the sheet feeder and adjust the paper guide to fit the paper width. And pull out the paper exit tray. Also make sure the print head gap adjustment lever is in the normal paper thickness mode. To perform a nozzle check print, switch the printer off. Hold down the online button while pressing the power button. Release both buttons when you hear the printer beep. Press the online button on the BJC 600 to start the nozzle check print. Note that on the BJC 600E and the BJC 610 printers, this nozzle check print is executed automatically after you hear the printer's beep. This nozzle check print contains the following information. The nozzle check pattern for each of the individual print heads, the ROM version, the CG version, the dip switch settings, the number of times the print head cover has been opened, and the number of pages printed. If all the print head nozzles are firing correctly, the horizontal line should look like this. If there are any missing or broken horizontal lines, perform a print head cleaning. To perform a print head registration check, switch the printer off. Hold down the paper select button while pressing the power button. Release both buttons when you hear the printer beep. Press the online button on the BJC 600 to start the test pattern. This registration check print is executed automatically after you hear the printer beep on the BJC 600E and the BJC 610. Look at the test pattern. Notice there are 13 registration samples. Select the bar with the best solid pattern. Now, press the print mode button to toggle between the light patterns until you see your selection. Then, press the online button. The black bar you choose will print out to confirm your selection. Press the power button to switch the printer off and save your registration selection. When replacing the control board or the print head, it's important to print out the service test print sample. This service test print has important information that must be programmed into the double EEPROM. This function will be discussed in the adjustment section of this video. To print the service test print sample, switch the printer off. Hold down the paper select, print mode, form feed, and online buttons. Then switch the printer on.
When the power indicator blinks, release all the buttons except the form feed button. Wait until the printer beeps and then release the form feed button. Press the online button to start the service test print and label it test print A. Now prepare to stop the tape. Read part two of the service manual. Add paper to your printer and print out the nozzle check print, the printhead registration check and the service test print. When you're finished, return to the videotape. Now stop the tape. Let's review how the bubble jet printhead works. When the COM and SEG signals combine to choose a nozzle, the heater plate within the nozzle receives an electronic pulse. The ink around the heater plate boils to form a bubble, forcing the ink out of the nozzle. As the bubble contracts, fresh ink is drawn into the nozzle to replace the ink that was ejected. The purge unit caps and cleans the printhead. This absorber catches the ink during maintenance jet function. A urethane wiper cleans the surface of the printhead. Each printhead is purged through this suction cap unit. This suction cap unit is used to purge ink from the ink cartridge through the nozzles during a cleaning, forcing the nozzles to fill with ink. The carriage will automatically move the selected color printhead to the suction cap during a cleaning cycle. The four protective cap units cap the printheads to prevent them from drying out when the printer is either powered off or not printing. The printheads are capped when the carriage unit is moved up by this white locking pin. The waste ink is deposited into this ink absorber pad in the bottom of the printer. The carriage is driven by the carriage belt. The belt is driven by the carriage motor. The purge unit has its own motor. The paper feed mechanisms and sheet feeder are driven by the paper feed motor. As the gears begin to turn, the cam is released, which allows the spring-loaded lifting plate to lift the paper up to the pickup roller. The paper selector lever moves the corner arm. When in the rear, plain paper position, the corner arm moves forward so the paper stacks upon it to ensure only one sheet is fed at a time. When the paper selector lever is in the envelope or thick paper position, the corner arm gets tucked away so thicker stock can easily leave the feeder. The pickup rollers turn one revolution to feed a sheet of paper and then resets the cam to hold down the lifting plate at the end of the paper feeding cycle. As the pickup roller turns to feed paper, the flag on the roller shaft actuates the pickup roller sensor mounted on this circuit board. Also on this board is the paper sensor. As the paper enters the printer, it contacts the sensor's arm, which actuates the paper sensor. The carriage home position sensor is located here. When the carriage reaches the home position, the carriage arm actuates the sensor. There is also an internal temperature sensor, which consists of a thermistor mounted on the carriage PCB. This sensor detects all internal temperature information of the printer. Carriage information is sent to the control board through the ribbon cable. The control board processes all printer-related functions. It contains the parallel interface, the printer controller IC, which translates information from the computer to the printer's microprocessor. This is the microprocessor unit, the DIP switches, DRAM, CG-ROM, which contains the printer's control program and font information. A 1K-bit double EEPROM contains electronically registered data and the linear circuit control. The linear circuit control IC contains functions such as automatic rank correction, head rank detection, and linear encoder adjustments. The linear encoder is located behind the carriage shaft. The linear encoder contains magnetic information, so do not touch the encoder with your hands. Avoid touching the encoder with any magnetic devices, such as a magnetic screwdriver. Only handle the encoder by the left or right memory edges. The linear encoder is read by the MR head, which is attached to the carriage unit. The encoder's information is sent to the control board to ensure the exact positioning of the carriage unit and print head at all times. The power supply converts the AC input to three DC voltages. The voltages are sent to the control board. Whenever the power cord is supplying AC power to the printer, the electronic system is active, even when the power indicator is off. 
VCC is 5 volts DC plus or minus 0.25 volts DC and is used for all the logic functions. VM is 27.6 volts DC plus or minus 1.5 volts DC and used to drive the motors. VH is about 19 volts DC plus or minus 0.3 volts DC and is used to drive the printheads. VR1 is a paint locked factory setting and is used only for the adjustment of VH. Do not break the paint lock and turn this variable resistor for any reason. The power supply contains a 3.15 amp replaceable fuse located under this blue cover. At this time, prepare to stop the tape, read part three in the service manual, and then answer the quiz questions found in the workbook. This tape will resume with printer disassembly. Now, stop the tape. Before disassembling the printer, print out the service test print sample. Switch the printer off. Wait five seconds and switch it back on. While the printer is powering up, the carriage will move down, unlocking the carriage unit so it can be moved. At this point, quickly unplug the printer. Remove the ink cartridges and print head and place them in a safe place. Begin by disassembling the outer covers. Flex the exit tray and remove it. Lift the top cover to a 90 degree angle from the printer body. Now lift the top cover up and off while pressing down on both sides of the printer. The notches on the cover are slotted so the cover can only be removed in this position. To remove the inner cover, flex the two latches on the inside front of the printer and then the two latches located on the inside frame. Remove the panel board by removing these two screws and disconnecting the ribbon cable. Disconnect the wire connectors and ribbon cables from the control board, then unhook the wires held by the main cover. Slide the carriage unit to the center of the printer. Locate the latches that are on the bottom of the main cover. Detach the latch on the right with a small screwdriver while lifting out the side of the main cover body. Now do the same on the left. Turn the printer around. Unhook the two latches from the bottom of the printer to lift the cover up and off. To remove the control board, remove the three short screws and then the two long screws that are attached to the parallel interface. Lift out the control board. Remove the pillar from the front of the unit. Unhook any wires held down by the sheet feeder unit. To remove the sheet feeder unit, remove the screws at each side. Disconnect the latches on each side of the feeder. Carefully disengage the gears and lift off the sheet feeder. To remove and replace the rollers from the sheet feeder, refer to your parts catalog. At this time, prepare to stop the tape. Remove the top, inner, and main covers, the panel board, the control board, and the sheet feeder. If you have any problems finding the correct latches to release, rewind this tape and watch the outer cover removal again. When you're ready, return to the tape. Now, stop the tape. Now, let's continue with the disassembly of the printer. To separate the power supply, remove the screws on each side. Unhook this latch and pull the power supply toward you. Now, detach and remove the paper and feed roller sensor PCB by unlatching the sensor from its sides. Remove the ferrite from the side latches to reveal the ribbon cable. Hold down the cable and then unlatch the ferrite holder from the printer's frame. Remove the metal plate held by these three screws. To reveal the ink absorber pad compartment, you must first remove the bottom cover. Disconnect the latch on the left and then on the right. Tilt the printer back, lift up and out. To replace the absorbent pad, unlatch and remove the cover from the ink compartment. To remove the purge unit, you must first remove the carriage support shaft. Remove the retaining clip on each side of the shaft and then slide the shaft out. On either side of the shaft holder are the factory set print head gap adjustment plates. 
Do not attempt to move or turn these adjustments. Remove the black screw holding the purge unit and then slide the purge unit out. Examine the purge unit. Notice where the motor and gears are located. Be careful when turning the gears because ink will spill from the bottom of the purge unit. Clean any ink mist from the purge unit, the platen and paper feed rollers. At this time, prepare to stop the tape. Remove the power supply, the purge unit, and sensors. When you're ready, return to the tape. We will continue with the disassembly of the printer. Now, stop the tape. Let's continue the disassembly with the removal of the carriage unit. First, flex this latch to release the ribbon cable. Carefully push the ribbon cable through the printer's frame. Loosen the screw holding the pulley assembly. Now push the assembly in to release the tension on the carriage belt and then remove the belt. To remove the carriage shaft and linear encoder, remove the clip holding the shaft on the right side. On the left side, flex the scale holder outward from the wide end to release the metal stopper. Then pinch the scale holder inward to remove it from the shaft and encoder. Now slide out the carriage shaft. Carefully turn and detach the black encoder holder off the printer's frame and carefully lift the carriage and encoder unit out of the printer, making sure not to touch, bend, or damage the linear encoder. To remove the linear encoder and MR head assembly, pull down on the lock latch and slide out the MR head cable from the carriage PCB. Unlatch the encoder and MR head assembly from the carriage unit. To remove the home position sensor, first remove the screws holding the carriage motor. Release the latches from the front of the printer that holds the home position sensor and remove. To remove the paper feed motor, remove these two screws and carefully release the motor from the gears. Now prepare to stop the tape. Remove the carriage unit, the linear encoder and MR head assembly. You should also remove the platen, paper feed roller and motors. We will continue the video with printer assembly. Now stop the tape. Now that we're back, let's begin the printer assembly. Replace the home position sensor, the carriage motor, and paper feed motor. Attach the linear encoder and MR head assembly to the carriage unit. Insert the MR head's ribbon cable to the carriage PCB and lock the cable back into place. From the front of the printer, carefully replace the carriage unit first inserting the left side of the encoder into the printer's frame, and then insert the right side of the encoder into the black encoder holder. The linear encoder's memory edges will only fit in one way. Attach the encoder holder to the frame of the printer. The linear encoder will look like this when attached to the printer. The flat side of the memory edge will face the rear of the printer. Insert the carriage shaft through the printer's frame the carriage unit, and black encoder holder. Use a new clip to secure the right side of the carriage shaft. Pinch the scale holder so it attaches to the linear encoder and carriage shaft. Then install the stopper by flexing the scale holder outward and positioning the stopper under the holder. Attach the carriage belt to the carriage motor. While pushing in on the pulley assembly, fit the belt over and onto the pulley. Adjust the belt tension and tighten the screw on the pulley assembly. Insert the carriage ribbon cable through the frame of the printer, and then insert the cable into its holder on the frame. Carefully slide the purge unit back into place while lining up the guide pins to the rear frame of the printer, and then install the black screw. Attach the printer's body to the bottom cover by inserting the body under these two tabs and then latch the sides of the body. Insert the support shaft through the printer's frame and the carriage unit. The indent on the shaft will be on the left side of the printer. 
Use new retaining clips to hold the support shaft. Attach the metal plate to the printer's frame with three screws. Attach the ferrite so it holds the ribbon cable. Attach the paper and feeder sensor, PCB, to the frame of the printer. Slide the power supply back into place and secure it with two screws. Carefully install the sheet feeder unit, making sure the gear meshes with the gear on the paper feed roller. Latch the sheet feeder to the printer's body and secure it with two screws. Attach the pillar to the printer's body and the metal plate. Install the control board to the metal plate holder. Secure it with three short screws and fit the two long screws on the sides of the parallel interface. Tighten the screws evenly. Attach the wire connectors and the carriage ribbon cables to the control board. Attach the panel PCB with two screws to the metal plate and attach its ribbon cable. You may want to test the printer at this point. Being careful not to touch any electrical circuits with any metal tools or other conductive objects. First, install the print head and ink cartridges and switch the printer on. Print out the service test print sample and label it Test Print B. Compare Test Print B with the test print A, which was printed before you began disassembling the printer. Check the bi-directional registration lines. Notice the registration lines on test print B are broken and irregular compared with test print A, where the registration lines are straight and uniform. There are two checks you can make to isolate the problem and locate a solution. The first thing to check, and the easiest, is the linear encoder. First. Make sure the linear encoder's right memory edge is seated correctly into the black encoder holder with the flat side of the memory edge positioned towards the rear of the printer. Also, confirm the encoder's left memory edge is seated correctly into the scale holder. Make sure the left memory edge is securely located into the slot of the scale holder. The second item to check is the linear encoder and the MR head assembly. Sometimes the latches here can break during assembly of the MR head to the carriage base unit. So it's important that you carefully install the MR head assembly into the carriage base unit. Then confirm the MR head is seated correctly into the carriage unit and the latches are not broken before you install the carriage unit into the printer. The next item to check on the service test print B is the nozzle check pattern or print quality. The next step is to check for print quality which is represented here on the test print. This test print pattern checks the correct firing of the print nozzles. Make sure the different solid color bars were printed evenly and uniform with no breaks or missing pieces. If you find the bars are printed with missing pieces or other quality problems, then you should take the following steps to isolate the problem. When trying to determine the cause of a print quality problem, always install a new print head and then perform a nozzles check print test. If the new print head does not solve your print quality problem, then remove the new print head and replace the protective tape to the print head nozzles and store for later use. Then continue to troubleshoot the problem. First, ensure the pad contact is installed correctly, making sure the indent on the pad is positioned to the lower right corner of the ribbon cable holder. Refer to service information notice QH12E 64081 for additional information about the contact pad. Make sure the ribbon cable holder is not broken here, which could prevent firm contact between the print head circuitry and ribbon cable. If the holder is broken, replace it. Also, make sure you carefully install these two tabs on the ribbon cable between these two slots located on the ribbon holder as seen here. Finally, check the carriage ribbon cable for damage. Replace the ribbon cable if you suspect a problem. Once you have made the necessary repairs, then rerun the service test print sample to confirm the problems have been corrected. Replace the main cover, attaching the rear latches and then the front, and secure the connector wires to the main cover. Replace the inner cover, 
and then the top cover. In a few moments, you'll be instructed to stop the tape, complete the assembly of the printer, then run a nozzle check print and test print sample to check its operation and print quality. If you need help in assembly, just rewind the tape to the section that's giving you trouble. The video will continue with printer adjustments. You will need a DOS PC, a printer cable, and BJC 600 series utility diskette. Now stop the tape. If you replace the control board or the print head in a BJC 600 series printer, you must reprogram the double EEPROM on the control board. This information is significant for printer registration and output. Make sure you have the service test print that was printed before the control board was replaced. And also make sure your printer is attached to your PC. Power off the printer and unplug it. Remove the ink cartridges and print head from the printer. Using a multimeter, we will check the resistance across the black ink heater. Look at the diagram on page 4-5. We'll attach the meter to pins 22 and 35, which is located here on the printhead circuitry. Write down this value and name it black ink resistance value. Reinstall the printhead and ink cartridges. The procedure for clearing the double EEPROM and reprogramming it is different in the BJC600E and BJC610 printers. The correct procedure for both printers is located on page 2-16 in the BJC 610 service manual. First, we will clear the double EEPROM. To do this, hold down the power, online, and form feed buttons simultaneously with one hand and plug in the printer. When the beeper sounds, the printer will run through a calibration test and clear the double EEPROM. Unplug the printer when the carriage returns to the home position and the print heads are capped. To get into the printer programmable mode, hold down the power and form feed buttons simultaneously with one hand and plug in the printer. Insert the utility program disk into your computer's disk drive. Run the utility program by typing A colon or whichever disk drive you're using and then press the enter key. Then type I-N-I-T-S-T-A-T. -T -T. Then press Enter. From the main menu, select 1, and then press Enter. Record the current room temperature in Celsius. So get the current room temperature and convert it to Celsius by using the conversion equation in your service policy. Enter the temperature, and then press Enter. For example, if the room temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, input 250 and then press Enter. The value will automatically be written to the printer once the Enter key is pressed. If you make a mistake, you must clear the double EEPROM again and restart this double EEPROM programmable function. From the main menu, select 2 to enter the black ink resistance value and then press Enter. This is the value we measured on the print head. Enter the resistance value. For example, if the value is 271.2 ohms, type 2712, then press the Enter key. Select number 3 and press Enter to set the waste ink volume. This information can be found on the service test print sheet. If the volume is 35.1, then type 351 and press Enter. To exit the program, select number 9 and then press Enter. Press the power button on the printer. This will save the data to the printer's double EEPROM. Print the test print sample to confirm your information. At this time, prepare to stop the tape. Read part four in the service manual and answer the quiz questions found in the workbook. When you're ready, this tape will continue with troubleshooting of the printer. Now, stop the tape. In this troubleshooting section, we will review two printer problems and discuss the procedures you should follow to properly troubleshoot and repair the BJC 600 series printers. The two problems we'll discuss are a printhead error 
and a no print or partial print problem. A word of caution before we begin. Make sure you're always ESD safe. Use an anti-static wrist strap and conductive mat to prevent damage by electrostatic discharge. When an error or print quality condition occurs in the BJC 600 series bubble jet printers, you should always refer to the error display chart located in the troubleshooting section of your service manual and the troubleshooting flow chart similar to this one, also located in the troubleshooting section of your service manual. Also, refer to service information notice QH 12E 64095, which will provide information on the differences between the BJC 600 and BJC 600E printers. At this time, prepare to stop the tape. Read the troubleshooting section in your service manual. Pay particular attention to the error display chart and troubleshooting flow charts. Also, review the service information notices and technical tips. Then, answer the quiz questions in the workbook. When you're ready, return to the tape. Now, stop the tape. Let's begin with troubleshooting a print head error. You observed an error indication on the control panel. First, refer to the error display chart in your service manual. Locate the error condition that is displayed on the control panel. You have determined that a print head error problem has occurred. Now, refer to service technical tip TT95001. This detailed flow chart will provide you with a step-by-step -step process with which to isolate a specific problem. But before you attempt to replace a suspected failed component, first observe any obvious conditions which may result in a solution. First, power off the printer. Remove the print head from the printer and make sure the printhead circuitry is clean and does not have any foreign debris located on its surface. If it does, gently clean the surface of the circuitry with a lint-free cloth and isopropyl alcohol. Check the contact pad located on the ribbon cable holder assembly. Refer to service information notice QH 12E 64081 for related information. This pad could be damaged or positioned incorrectly on the ribbon holder assembly. Replace the pad contact if damaged, making sure the indent on the pad is positioned to the lower right corner of the ribbon cable holder. Also, check the ribbon cable holder assembly for damage. This plastic assembly can break here, which can prevent a firm contact between the ribbon cable and the circuitry on the print head. If the ribbon cable holder is damaged, replace it. Also, place these two tabs located here on the ribbon cable which should be positioned into these two slots on the ribbon cable holder. Ensure the tabs are not bent or creased in any way during installation, or it can result in poor contact between the ribbon cable and the circuitry on the print head. This can cause a possible error condition. After performing these checks and correcting any problems you find, install the print head, making sure it's properly seated into the carriage unit. Then perform a service test print to ensure the correct operation and print quality of the printer. If these steps have not resulted in a solution, then refer back to the troubleshooting flowchart and follow the steps to isolate the problem. The symptom is a no print or partial print condition. If this problem is found on either the BJC 600 or BJC 600E, you should perform a forehead cleaning procedure without the ink cartridges installed. If the problem is located on the BJC 610, you should perform a transportation head cleaning procedure. Refer to page 2-12 in the BJC 610 service manual for the correct procedure. As the head cleaning function is in progress, notice whether the ink is moving through the silver ink filter screens located in the front of the print head. Replace the purge unit if no ink is moving through any of the silver ink filters. Install the ink cartridges and then repeat the head cleaning procedure. Perform a nozzle check print after the head cleaning has finished. If the symptom continues, then refer back to the flow chart in the service manual and follow the steps to help you locate a solution. Always perform a nozzle check print and a service test print after any printer repair. These test prints can aid in confirming the printer's correct operation and print quality. There is one additional item we would like to bring to your attention. 
The carriage board for the BJC 600 is not interchangeable with the BJC 600E and the BJC 610. If you install the incorrect board, a linear encoder error can occur. Refer to service information notice number QK 12E 65118 for additional information. Remember, observation can be an important tool during the troubleshooting and repair process and may save you time and effort in solving a repair problem. This completes the BJC 600 series video technical training course. We hope that this video has been helpful to your printer training. We invite you to visit Canon's worldwide webpage at www.ccsi.canon.com. Refer to your workbook for other important information. We look forward to serving your needs in the future and thank you for choosing Canon. Hello, and welcome to the Canon Training Academy. You're about to begin a journey, a journey through one of Canon's newest products. In this training program, you'll learn how to disassemble, reassemble, and then test the LBP 460 laser printer. In order to complete this training, you'll need a computer running either Windows 3.1 or Windows 95, an LBP 460, a bi-directional printer cable, a Phillips and flat blade screwdriver, the service manual and parts catalog, and the accompanying workbook. We suggest you place yourself in the proper training environment, which takes into consideration the appropriate ESD safeguards and is free of any outside distraction. This training moves at a rapid pace, so we suggest that you do not skip over any section. If you need to see a section over again, scan the tape until you reach the desired topic. At certain points during the training, you'll be asked to stop the tape, to read a section of the service manual, or to proceed with a hands-on exercise or quiz which is found in the workbook. This training course has been created so you can learn to repair the LBP 460 laser printer, so do not skip over sections of the training. And please write your answers on a photocopy of the provided answer sheet and do not write in the workbook. At this time, read the workbook's introduction section, find out about the new features of the LBP 460, then answer the quiz. And afterward, collect the necessary items to begin the hands-on training. At this time, stop the tape and read chapters one and two of the service manual and answer the questions in section one of the workbook. The LBP 460 has the following new features. AX engine, EPA toner cartridge, new paper path, and utilizes a Windows printing system driver. At this time, a service technician will show you how to disassemble the LBP 460. We'll begin by removing the outer covers. It is recommended that you have a multi-bin storage container for the screws and small parts and that your service manual be open to Chapter 3. Open the cartridge door and remove the EPA toner cartridge. The EPA toner cartridge has a shelf life of two and a half years and can print up to 2,500 pages at 5% coverage. To remove the back cover, you will need to remove the three silver screws that secure it into place. Then, release the two locking clips with a flat blade screwdriver and remove the rear cover.
To remove the top cover, you must first open the cartridge door. Remove these two silver screws. Then lift straight up and off. Then lift off the multi-purpose tray. Now remove the black screw from the stopper strap. Flex in on each side of the cartridge door to release the two claws and then lift the cover out. To remove the front cover, you'll need to use a flat blade screwdriver to release the two locking clips and then slide the unit off. Depress the locking clip and lift the cover off. Depress the locking clip and carefully remove the side while holding on to the lever cover. The main parts of the LBP-460 consist of the laser scanner assembly, sensor lever assembly, drive gear assembly, paper pickup unit, and the fixing assembly. To remove the laser scanner assembly, you must first remove connectors J5 and J4. Then remove the four silver screws. Be sure not to remove the three black screws and then lift out the assembly. To remove the sensor lever assembly, remove connectors J2 and J3. Then push up on the pen and on the sensor arm. Then rotate the unit clockwise and lift out. To remove the reinforcement plate, remove the silver screw from the top of the case and lift it off. To remove the paper pickup assembly, you must first remove the cabling along the right hand side and disconnect the J6 cable from the paper feed unit and remove the J204 cable from the video controller PCB. Remove the grounding spring on the right-hand side as well as the four silver screws that secure it to the chassis. Gently press the feed roller assembly to release it from the main chassis and slide the unit straight out the back. To remove the fusing assembly, first remove the left cartridge guide by pressing the release button and lifting the front portion straight up and then out. Then remove the right sub cartridge guide by pushing the release button in and sliding the unit forward and then out. 
Remove the screw and grounding spring from the right cartridge guide. Press on the release button and slide the unit up and then remove. Remove the cable from J102 on the printer controller PCB assembly by using a flat blade screwdriver to release the locking clip and sliding the cable out. Release the cable from the cable guide. Remove the two screws from the delivery assembly unit and lift the unit off. To remove the fuser's pressure plate, you must remove these two screws. Using a flat blade screwdriver, release the pressure clips on the right and left sides, then Lift the pressure plate off. To remove the fixing assembly, carefully lift the unit up and out of its holder by its sides. Careful not to touch the film on the roller. Then carefully remove the connector. Remove the locking gear on the pressure roller by using a flat blade screwdriver to release it. Remove the transfer guide and the pressure roller. Be careful not to touch the orange sponge area. Hold on to the shaft only. To remove the separation guide assembly, you must first remove the screws securing both the assembly and the right side plate. Then, lift the side plate out. Carefully remove the gears from the separation guide assembly by using a flat blade screwdriver. And remove the separation guide assembly. To remove the transfer block assembly, you must unlock these five clips using a flat blade screwdriver. Then the unit will lift right off. To get to the printer's PCBs, tilt the printer forward. Remove the four feet. Then lower the base plate down. This is also known as the electrical component assembly. When removing it from the printer, remember to unplug connector J206 from the printer controller PCB. At this point, stop the tape and read chapter two of the service manual and take the quiz in the workbook. With the printer face down, reconnect the J206 connector to the printer's controller PCB. Lift the base plate to the main chassis. Reconnect the feet. Be mindful these feet are keyed, and if installed to the wrong spot, will prevent the covers from locking into place.
Reattach the transfer block assembly, making sure that each clip locks into place. Reattach the separation guide assembly and the right side plate, securing them with these screws. Reattach the transfer gear and the locking gear to the separation guide assembly. Install the pressure roller. Be careful not to touch the orange sponge portion. Reattach the locking gear and the transfer guide. Install the fixing assembly by holding it by its sides and inserting it into the left and right guide plates. Be careful not to touch the fixing film on the roller. Then reconnect the connector. Replace the pressure plate, securing in the back, and then push down, locking it by the clips, then secure it by its screws. Set the delivery assembly over the pressure plate and secure it with its screws. Reinstall the left cartridge guide. Reinstall the right cartridge guide and grounding strap, securing it with a silver screw. Reinstall the right sub cartridge guide. Thread the cable through the cable guide and reconnect J102 to the printer controller PCB assembly. Reconnect J204 to the video controller PCB and insert the paper pickup unit, securing it by its four silver screws. Now, lock the feed rollers into the chassis.
Reconnect the J6 jumper to the paper pickup assembly. Then thread the cables to the scanner and sensor assemblies up the side of the paper pickup unit. Reconnect the grounding spring. Reattach the reinforcement plate, securing it with its screw. Reinstall the sensor assembly by carefully installing the sensor lever and then rotating the unit counterclockwise. Carefully set the scanner assembly, securing it with its four silver screws. Reconnect the J3 and J2 connectors to the sensor assembly. Reconnect J5 and J4 to the scanner assembly. Set the base of the right cover into the feet, then lift and secure the top of the cover into the main chassis. Carefully install the left side cover into the feet. While holding the lever cover over the lever, raise the left side cover up, securing it into the main chassis. Slide the front cover in and push gently on each side to lock the cover into place. Now set the multipurpose tray on the top of the unit and install the top cover. Remember to align the multipurpose tray and top cover before securing the cover with its screws. Install the cartridge cover by first inserting one side, then flexing the other side into place. Reconnect the stopper to the main unit and secure it with its black screw. Install the back cover by lining up the clips. Gently push the cover to lock it into place. Then secure the cover with its screws. Reinstall the EPA toner cartridge and close the cartridge door.
To perform an engine test on the printer, use a flat blade screwdriver to remove the EC cap, then use the screwdriver to depress the switch. This completes the LBP 460 video technical training. We hope that this video has been helpful in printer training. And thank you for choosing Canon.